Goodman. It's been over half a century since Alan Dulles resigned as director of the CIA, but his legacy lives on. Between 1953 and 61, under his watch, the CIA overthrew the governments of Iran and Guatemala, invaded Cuba, was tied to the killing of Patrice Lumumba, Congo's first democratically elected leader. A new biography of Alan Dulles looks at how his time at the CIA helped shape the current national security state. Biographer David Talbot writes, quote, the Alan Dulles story continues to haunt the country. Many of the practices that still provoke bouts of American soul-searching originated during Dulles's formative rule at the CIA. Talbot goes on to write, mind control experimentation, torture, political assassination, extraordinary rendition, mass surveillance of U.S. citizens and foreign allies, these were all widely used tools of the Dulles reign. Well, David Talbot joins us now to talk about his new book, The Devil's Chessboard, Alan Dulles, the CIA, and the rise of America's secret government. He's the founder and former CEO and editor-in-chief of Salon. Uh, David Talbot's also author of the bestseller, Brothers, The Hidden History of the Kennedy Years. It's great to have you with us, David. What an astounding me. book. Um, Chelsea Manning, um, Edward Snowden, how do they relate to Alan Dulles, the longest reigning CIA director? Well, as I write in the book, and as you just pointed out, uh, all the practices that we are wrestling with as a country now, the intelligence and security measures, including, I might add, uh, the legacy of the killing fields in Central America that your guest uh, was just discussing in Guatemala and so on, that all had its roots, not after 9-11, but during the Dulles era and the Cold War. Uh, he was a man who felt he was above the law. He felt uh, that democracy was something that should not be left in the hands of the American people or its representatives. He was part of what the famous sociologist from the 1950s, um, C. Wright Mills, called the power elite. And he felt that he and his brother and those types of people should John be running Foster the country. John Foster Dulles, Secretary of State. Exactly. They were a dynamic duo, of course. Uh, his brother Foster, as he was known, was Secretary of State. As you say, under Eisenhower, he was head of the CIA. It was a one-two punch. <laughs> Uh, let's go to Alan Dulles in his own words, speaking in 1965, defending the actions of the CIA. The idea that uh, it is necessarily nefarious, it's always engaged in overthrowing governments, that's false. That's for the birds. Now, there are times, there are times uh, when the United States government feels that the developments in another government, such as in the uh, Vietnam situation, is of a nature. Uh, to imperil the, the safety and the security and the peace of the world and ask the Central Intelligence Agency to be its agent in that particular situation. At no time has the CIA engaged in any political activity or any intelligence activity that was not approved at the highest level. That's Alan Dulles in 1965, at no time, he says. So talk about the history uh, that is so intimately connected to us today. Often countries that have been, their leaders have been overthrown, mm -hmm. know this history in a way that Americans don't know. That's 53, right. 54, go through and it. And of course, Alan Dulles was a consummate liar and was, uh, you know, very uh, adept at manipulating the media, the American media. That particular interview was one of the ones that actually he got posed some of the tougher questions by John Chan chancellor of, the, of NBC News. And he actually went on to say, you know, I try to uh, let the Congress uh, know what I'm doing when Chancellor asked him, is there any political oversight of the CIA? But whenever I go to Congress, he says, and he starts to tell the secrets of the CIA, uh, members of Congress would say, no, 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 we don't want to know. We don't want to talk in our sleep. So that, of course, was his cover. Um, yes, uh, overthrowing governments at will. Uh, I think one of the more tragic stories I tell in the book is the story of Patrice Lumumba, who was this young, charismatic uh, leader, the, the hope of African nationalism in the Congo. And he was overthrown uh, by a CIA-backed military coup in the Congo um, and later uh, captured and brutally assassinated. Uh, the CIA story before the Church Committee in the 1970s, oh, we tried to kill him, we tried to poison him, but we're the gang that can't shoot straight. We're not very good at assassinations. Well, they were far too modest. In fact, we now know that the people who beat uh, Patrice Lumumba to death once he was captured were on the payroll of the CIA. Now, Alan Dulles kept that fact from John F. Kennedy for over a month. John Kennedy, uh, when he was running for president, 
was known as the advocate, a supporter of African nationalism. They knew that once John Kennedy was inaugurated, the CIA, and was in office, that he would help Lumumba, who was uh, in captivity at that point. And I believe that his execution, his murder, was rushed before Kennedy could uh, get in the White House. They then withheld that information from the president for over a month. So the CIA was defying presidents uh, uh, all the time, and in, in particularly in the case of Kennedy, who they felt was young, they could manipulate, and they didn't need to really bring into their confidence. So you have the CIA running international um, intelligence, and they're keeping, well, you say keeping from. What makes you believe that Kennedy didn't know? Uh, that he didn't know about the, the murder? Well, there's a, a famous picture that was taken of uh, him in the White House as he's getting the phone call from not from the CIA, but from U.N. Ambassador Adlai Stevenson, mm -hmm. who finally tells him a, a month after Lumumba's been buried and dead uh, about this terrible murder. And his face, as you see from this famous photograph by Jacques Lowe, the White House photographer, is crumpled in agony. I think this shows all the terrible sorrow that's to come in the Kennedy presidency. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think that uh, the war between Kennedy and the CIA began after the Bay of Pigs invasion, the CIA's disastrous operation in Cuba. That is true. It became particularly, I think, aggravated after that. But you can see from this, from day one, even before he was inaugurated, the CIA was defying him. 1953, go back a few years. What is the relevance of what the Dulles brothers did in Iran with what we are seeing today in U.S.-Iranian relations? Well, again, these terrible historical ripples continue from the Dulles era. Uh, Iran was trying to throw off the yoke of British colonialism. Uh, Britain, through uh, British Petroleum, the company now known as British Petroleum, controlled all of Iran's oil resources. Um, and under the leadership of Mossadegh, uh, this popular leader who was elected by his people, he began to push back against British control and, as a result, antagonized uh, Western oil interests, including the Dulles brothers. The Dulles brothers' power originally came from their law firm. Sullivan and Cromwell, the most powerful law firm on Wall Street, and they represented a number of oil companies. So once these uh, the Western oil interests were antagonized uh, by Mossadegh's uh, attempt to uh, reclaim sovereignty over these oil resources, his days were numbered. And so uh, the task of overthrowing him is given to the CIA, given to Alan Dulles. Uh, there's a very volatile situation, uh, people supporting Mossadegh in the streets versus um, the CIA-supported forces. The Shah, who's the puppet, of course, ruler of, uh, of uh, Iran on the peacock throne, uh, flees because he's not a particularly brave man. He flees to Rome. Uh, Dulles flies to Rome. He's busy shopping, the Shah, uh, you know, enjoying his exile with his glamorous wife. And uh, Dulles is given the job of putting a little lead in his spine and getting the Shah to return to Iran after they finally succeed, the CIA, in overthrowing the popular leader Mossadegh. Well, after that, that begins a reign of horror, then, in Iran. Uh, democratic elements, uh, the left, uh, the Communist Party are rounded up, tortured, and uh, the Shah is installed in this terrible autocratic, autocratic regime that, of course, we know uh, had a terrible uh, downfall uh, uh, during the Carter administration, and we're still paying the price for the bitterness uh, that the Iranian people feel towards the United States for intervening in their uh, sovereign interests. And the U.S. would go on, the Dulles brothers would go on to do the very same thing the next year, 1954, in Guatemala? That's right. They were on a roll. They thought they could do anything, exert their will anywhere in the world. Akabo Arbenz, uh, again, a popular Democratic leader uh, elected in uh, Guatemala. We only have 10 seconds in this portion. The, the Kennedy of uh, Guatemala is overthrown again by, uh, Arben, uh, by uh, the Dulles brothers partly because they were representatives of United Fruit. United Fruit was uh, a major, you know, power player in Guatemala. We're going to leave it there, but we're going to do part two, and we're going to post online at democracynow.org. David Talbot is author of the new book, The Devil's Chessboard, Alan Dulles, the CIA, and the Rise of America's Secret Government. David Talbot is founder and former ed and editor-in-chief at Salon. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.